The rise of women empowerment is a force that cannot be ignored. Joining us now is also an outstanding woman. She is the Global Program Director of Cartier Women Initiatives, Winden Singh. Welcome, Ms. Singh. First questions. Yeah, you're in really outstanding entrepreneurs and you have spent a lot of time and also put a lot of effort to encourage women to do their own business and also social issues. Why do you pay so much attention on that? Yeah, so globally, you know, if you take a look at the entrepreneurship ecosystem, what you'll find is that uh, there's a, a lack of women founders and there's also a lack of women investors. And as a result, many products and services do not include um, women uh, within mine. And so um, accordingly, you know, if you think entrepreneurship is the beginning of many important business ideas and also many uh, the beginning of the creation of important products and services for the world, um, having greater representation of everybody is very important. And so while the Cartier Women Initiative is specifically focused on the woman dimension, um, at the heart of it is this idea of um, diversity, equity and inclusion. And that um, having greater representation in the entrepreneurship ecosystem and a more inclusive entrepreneurship ecosystem will really create um, a better uh, business world uh, for all in the future. Yes, that's very important issues because and there are so many male entrepreneurs right now, but how else they get which addition is that there are a lack of women entrepreneurs. So compared with the male counterpart, what are the characteristics of women? Yes, um, if you take a look at the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, which is the longest body of um, entrepreneurship research data that is out there, what you'll find is that uh, women are starting businesses 20% uh, less than men. And then also um, at the same time, when you look at established businesses, it's uh, a bit more than 30% less than men. And so this gap actually just shows you that actually indeed the activity basis is uh, causing that. Um, and then more specifically, when you take a look at uh, the difference um, between the experience of a woman starting business and the experience of a man starting business, what you'll see is that um, they do face additional barriers that is, um, not as common um, in the male population. Okay, so speaking of barriers, what are the challenges that women usually normally face when they're starting their own system? Yes, uh, I would say it's um, from our experiences of learning from uh, a company, the 330 entrepreneurs that we've had in our program, uh, it, I would say it's two main categories. One is around financing. I think uh, financing um, and a startup is uh, difficult for everybody, don't get me wrong. I think there is a big journey for every founder out there in terms of raising the capital to meet um, uh, the need of starting the business. However, for a woman entrepreneur, really what you'll see in a lot of data statistics, rather it is around raising equity funding or rather it is raising debt funding to perpetuate and scale the business, um, they are receiving significantly less. Depending on what geography is uh, usually less than 10%. And um, as a result, um, you know, no business can thrive without the injection of capital to create the business value. And so um, I think financing is the first category of challenges that women face that is more than what men face. The second category of challenges that I would say women face is really um, because of um, the life of a woman, um, you know, with many different events than um, the male counterpart. Um, and so, you know, motherhood is one that, you know, many of us can relate to. And then also is um, woman being the primary caregiver for also um, the elderly generation, right? Um, the whole conversation around the care economy and unpaid work around women um, uh, in professions is very relevant also for the women entrepreneurs. So what you had mentioned is that I feel like women has faced a lot of difficulties, not only in their Live live viewpoints because do you their work so what can continue to do to help these yeah, so for Cartier Women Initiative, we are an international woman impact entrepreneurship program that is supporting uh, women founders. And we help them by uh, providing three types of main support. One is uh, financial capital, one is social capital, and the third is human capital support. Uh, the financial capital is, is indeed financial capital. We, they've received uh, grant funding by being awarded as part of the Cartier Women Initiative program. And this hopefully will um, enable them with some capital that will uh, further the growth of their business. Um, they also receive social capital from us and this is on two levels. One is um, around um, creating greater visibility for their work in telling um, the stories of their business and then also creating a network of other women entrepreneurs that can be uh, a peer network for them and other supporters who are really passionate about the difference that women impact entrepreneurs can make for the world.
Um, and then the third is uh, human capital. Uh, you know, the entrepreneurship journey is uh, full of new things that we all encounter. You know, one day you're a chief marketing officer, next day you're chief financial officer. You know, you're, you wear many different hats. And so in this journey, you know, hopefully uh, by providing human capital support of workshop trainings, educational support, our strategic academic partners is the INSEAD Business School. And um, with them, we have created a woman impact entrepreneurship program that really accompanies women entrepreneurs in their journey in strategic thinking. Um, and so these are just some examples of how we are offering supports to this um, group of incredible change makers. I believe that the winner actually this year, the uh, Continuers Women Initiatives, has represented a very diverse background. So um, do you have any, um, like, any of the most memorable stories? Yes, from this current edition of 2024, um, you know, first of all, they are all incredible, uh, they remarkable. You know, we select them out of thousands of applicants and, uh, and indeed, um, this also shows the glimmer of hope around the world, right? There are many, many of these change makers doing this work. So do not feel like you're alone in a journey if you're someone considering this or uh, in it in the journey. Um, but perhaps I share with you one story because um, she is uh, an incredible entrepreneur from Singapore. So. Um, uh, Dr. Lin Lim, she is the founder of uh, uh, NUNSQ and she is um, an ENT surgeon um, and also uh, a mother with a daughter. And um, I share her story because she uh, went on um, a humanitarian medical um, journey and uh, in Cambodia where she was providing volunteering uh, support to children who were in need of uh, seeing an ENT doctor, right? And in this journey of hers um, and this trip, um, she learned that so many children were had the condition of glue ear. And the condition of glue ear um, is something that requires a, a small surgery. And in many places in the world um, that has strong medical facilities, um, it's not a large procedure, right? But in Cambodia, because they didn't, they were missing some key um, environment uh, resources, they were not able to remedy um, the glue ear. And so for her, when she returned, um, she was really devastated by that, you know, so many children were basically suffering and having hearing losses for something that is entirely preventable, right, or, or curable. And um, so when she returned, um, she also, as a mom with her daughter, uh, took her daughter to a ear piercing, um, uh, you know, to get uh, ear piercing for, for earrings. And um, as an ENT doctor, she, she sort of put the two together. It's like, what if she developed a handheld device that can solve for glue ear surgery um, uh, in more places of the world uh, where the condition for actual surgery is not possible? Um, and that's what she did with her business. And um, this is the business she applied to Cartier Women Initiative with. And it's just an incredible story of how like a change maker encountering a challenge in the world that she feels like, wow, you know, we can do something about this. And she really took the action uh, to do something about it, even though she's a surgeon and doesn't come from, uh, you know, creation of medical device, running a business background. And, um, and then from that, you know, connecting her, her experience as a mom, right? Um, and I think this just also showcase why it's so important to have an inclusive entrepreneurship ecosystem, right? People with different backgrounds, different circumstances come up with different solutions to all of the challenge that we're all facing. And they, they are the first ones to also see uh, challenges that maybe some of us don't see. So um, her story, I think, is one that caps uh, encapsulates why uh, we do the work that we do. And um, it's change maker like her that makes um, us feel inspired about like the change possibility around social and environmental change. But I believe that there are more stories. I mean, besides her, there are a lot of people that have different stories. Yes. What could those winners characteristic, common characteristic? Yes, um, I think uh, the, the first one I would highlight is uh, they, um, they take action. You know, there's like, you know, there's a lot of intention and then, but there's always an action and intention gap. And so they take action, right? Like they encounter a problem that they could not let go um, of the world and they really dedicate their life and specifically their livelihood to solve for it. And so I would say um, the courage to take action is, is one common characteristic. And then the second is really around uh, perseverance. You know, the journey of entrepreneurship really is full of ups and downs. And when you are creating a business around social and environmental change topics, I think on one hand, you're really powered by your cause and your advocacy and the communities that you're serving. 
but on the other it is also um, a challenging journey so you really have to persist um, uh, and, and have the grit to maintain um, why uh, you are really in love in solving this problem. Thank you. So after hearing all stories, I feel like this is very important to so or I feel entrepreneur myself. What does it mean for Inri Kha to you for supporting bees? Yes, I think as uh, you know, what I just shared, you know, around the courage to take um, action, um, really uh, shows like some of the values of Cartier ourselves. Um, for one, you know, when we created the Cartier Women Initiative um, since 2006, it was very much inspired by all the inspirational stories that we were hearing around women change maker and how they were reflective of our Maison's value. You know, entrepreneurship, the courage, the, the boldness to create change, those are all very key corporate values of Cartier. And we're really proud to have a chance to uh, support these change makers in creating the change that they want to see in the world, but also being so inspired by them around, you know, um, these values that we hold so dear within the Maison. They also had the child back in, so I had to love your own. So last question from you, I would like to ask, so, so what kind of environment would you like, would you call for your two for the next 10, well, 20 years? Oh, well, uh, for little Charlie, <laughs> he's four at the moment. <laughs> um, well, I hope the future will be full of possibilities of one, many of the social and environmental challenge that we see in the world to be solved by everybody. Uh, you know, our program is around women, but there are many incredible entrepreneurs from all different dimensions of representation that need support. And um, we hope that via the Cartier Women Initiative that they really feel like, hey, uh, our, our world's challenges should be solved by all of us. Um, and then, of course, I hope that, um, you know, many of these actual challenges will have um, gone away and that, you know, maybe as a planet as a whole, we would have uh, tackled all of the UN and SDG goals because um, the United Nations Sustainable Go Development Goals was originally set with the goal of uh, 2030 reaching. Um, and um, not sure we'll reach all of them by 2030, but I think, um, you know, there's an opportunity for all of us to work together. From all your support, I believe that we will definitely do some progress. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.